You're listening to Tori Writer's She Said What podcast. I'm Tori, along with Marcy Persky. In this installment, we're not really into porn, but there does seem to be a universe of options available. Also, the ghost hospital and St. Somebody or Other's gift shop. I could understand Zoom changing their software so that every time you enter a, a room, someone has to, you have to show, give permission to show your video. Yeah, who knows? I might be sitting here naked. I'm sure there are people who would deeply appreciate that. <laughs> I don't, I'm not I'm, one of them, but I'm sure there are such people. I'm trying to, trying to think of a job that I can do without, that doesn't naked? involve my right hand. Maybe uh, only fans page. Of a, me just naked with a brace. I'm sure there think? are people. It's so weird. There's like nothing you could possibly make up that people aren't into on the internet. Oh, I know. I know. I was thinking about doing like a phone sex line, but I really, really thought it through. And A, I'm way too sarcastic and mean. <laughs> and then B, I'm way too judgmental. And I would laugh. All the time. And I don't think you're supposed to laugh on a phone sex line. Well, I think that there are people who would like to be laughed at. Because what? now you can go on the internet and you can actually see and not just hear. Yeah, I think, though, the pictures are better when you just hear. <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> I also I also worry that if I'm, I'm or maybe I shouldn't worry, but. I listen back to our podcast, and I'm sounding more and more like Marge Simpson every day. Oh, stop. And, I, and I'm not sure if anyone wants to be on a phone sex line with Marge Simpson on the other end. You could put any random combination of words <laughs> together and then put porn at the end of it. And there is yep. a whole YouTube channel dedicated to it. Like, I'm looking around my room, and I see, see I wouldn't know. the studio. I see Thai windmill microphone cable chandelier porn. And there, there's there got to be a YouTube for people who are into, you know, Thai feather torture with microphone cables and I, chandelier I, I lit rooms. I mean, there's got to be. I might be into that windmill porn. <laughs> <laughs> that might be kind of fun. After we spoke last week, I went and joined Sam's Club. Right. How was it? Sam's Club porn? I went. This is Sam's Club porn for sure. I went to go pick up two things and spent $499. Yeah, that's how that works. Back of my truck. They should just call it, you know, any big warehouse store should just, just be underwritten by Dyson because it just vacuums. Sure. Your entire bank account. Yeah. It sure does. Yeah. But now we have uh, toilet paper to last us into probably the next millennium. Important. Because my husband was so worried about having too many women in the house. It's very now. important, though. He can rest assured. It is. And you can never have too many paper products. I observed this at Target the other day. Very festive holiday paper products all over the place with eggs and bunnies and carrots it's almost Passover. Yeah. For this holiday, all you really need is about a truck full of paper towels. When are you going to go start going crazy? You have noted the fact that at Passover, uh, I go into an insane cleaning mode, which I will not be able to do with my arm in a cast. That's right. You're going to have to get some whirling dervishes to come over and do that for I'm you. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I really don't know. I don't want to think about it. I have had a conversation with the spousal unit. He assures me in his charming way that there's nothing to worry about, that he'll do it all, but I know better. Well, you know what? We did Thanksgiving here with a cast, and Frankie did everything, and it actually turned out really, 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 really good. Well... Frankie. So maybe I'll send Frankie. Yeah, there you want to send Frankie to clean my oven? You really think that's a good idea? <laughs> he'll do it. Aw, and he'll look then cute doing it, him. too. Yeah, I know you would. I know, I know, I know. So um, yesterday, after I spent the morning and afternoon doing medical stuff, there, there's a weird thing going on around Chicago. You know how the community hospitals are going the way of the horse and buggy, as they say? Well, Com community hospitals. Not up little, here, but 
little community hospitals all over the city. Every neighborhood used to have a little hospital. Every neighborhood had Oh, that's true. Yeah. No more, right? No more. And some of them are apartments now, and some of them have been knocked down altogether. Various things have happened to the community hospital. But in the case of this one community hospital, it was sort of a, a hulking ghost ship in the middle of this interesting, diverse suburb of Oak Park where Frank Lloyd Wright used to live, just for the yeah. for the uninitiated. And it, it was just this shell of a hospital. Well, it was bought by a big medical place here. About six years ago, one of my girlfriends got her hip replaced at this location and it was sort of like, we're going to take a ghost ship of an empty hospital and we'll just use a little bit of it and the rest of it will be empty and creepy and the whole place will strike you as something out of Twilight Zone. It's a you weren't there to get your hip replaced. No, you? I was there to keep my girlfriend oh, company while she got her okay. hip replaced by the fancy doctor from the fancy hospital. But they had opened this little surgical outpost on one floor ah. of this crazy, weird. It was surreal. Can you imagine going into a hospital where nothing's happening, but there's still a gift shop? Actually, you know what? My original orthopedic surgery guy yeah. that did my first surgery on my wrist. Yeah. Their place got bought up like that. And now it's all empty except for the surgical center. What well, was because... weird? They told her she couldn't stay overnight because they closed at six. Yep, that's what this place was like. <laughs> and they were so worried bizarre. They have to keep it overnight. And they were hurrying up and the nurses are like rushing her. And, and I, I was... would think there's ghosts of dead patients all over. Oh, you worry about weird. Talking <laughs> the halls. Fast forward six or seven years and the whole place has been spiffed up. And they're using, I guess, all of it now. But the signage, the signage hasn't caught up with it at all. So on every floor, for example, no matter what's going on there, they're advertising the gift shop. (laughs) As if, as if, you know, you're in hospice, you need to go to the gift shop. (laughs) Are there still hospital gift shops, by the way? Oh, anywhere? heck yeah, because Are I there? oh you want to know how to make an S-ton of money. <laughs> Open a hospital gift shop. That has got to be a license to print money. I mean, people are desperate. They don't know what to do. If you're a shopping fiend, the hospital gift shop is just someplace you can t- spend money and, and and not think about what's going on with the person that you brought there or picking up there or visiting there. And if you're... You know, if someone's really, you want to see the best shopping in the world is right yeah. around all those cancer clinics. Oh, it's like you're dying of cancer. So your spouse goes out and spends your entire life insurance policy because they don't know what else to do. Like they don't our, our know. Little, our little hospitals up here, the gift shop would be the bar across the street. <laughs> Well, I guess they expect that if anything serious is wrong with you, they're going to ship you down to Flagstaff anyway. That's but, true. But the small town of Rochester, Minnesota, where the world famous Mayo Clinic is, where like the Shah yeah. of Iran, like famous they international people end up there. You will know it's like Rodeo Drive in the middle of nowhere. Really? Yeah, because the people flying in from all over the world have an S ton of money and they don't care. And they just, you know, they want something to do while their loved one is undergoing possibly life-ending surgery. They go shopping. They go shopping. And this is a foreign concept to you. I can see this now. It is foreign concept. I'd rather sit in a bar and do shots. Of course, this isn't about you, though. This is about people with That's money, true. which you I'm are not, not, not. Or people who have no hope, also not you. Five for two dollar uh, Jello shots. There you go. That's but they, that's mean. not at the hospital. You get the Jello no. at the cafeteria, the yes. and you have to go across the street to buy the shot part. Yes. But if you're actually, that's if someone so you know funny. is actually shot, shot. What, you mean what, like with a gun? Yeah. Then you want to go shopping. That's what you want to do. You want to go downstairs <laughs> and you and mindlessly open up your wallet and buy three Coach handbags. That's what you want to do. Uh, Apparently, I think so. <laughs> and and what's more, if you're desperate for a gift to cheer somebody up, you don't really care what you buy. You just want to buy something. So the hospital gift shop is the strangest combination of extremely high end, strange, bizarro stuff, and also really ugly stuff that people will buy because they just want to walk into the room with something. Dad, since we're talking about 
hospitals and doctors. Like you will buy medicine. a pink plush poodle yes. for, for a construction yes. worker yes. in the hospital gift shop. All and I'm picturing are airport gift shops. The airport gift shop is the province of the procrastinating parent or fiance <laughs> or boyfriend or girlfriend. You know. Well, see, now you're making me want to go down to the big city and just wander through hospital gift shops. And there are always these ladies. It's never, never, never a guy behind the counter at the hospital gift shop. Why is that? I don't know. Are they volunteers, maybe? It depends on the hospital, I think. This particular hospital, the Strange Ghost Ship Hospital? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it was originally a religious institution that ran the hospital, some church or other. So it was the Saint Somebody of Somebody or Other's Society that ran the Saint gift shop. Saint Somebody of Somebody. <laughs> I don't know. Don't ask nice. me. <laughs> don't know. You know, we're getting old when most of our social life revolves around hospitals, doctors, hospital gift shops, and friends having surgery. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's true. Spousal unit went to grab something out of the car, was gone for 20 minutes. I asked him what kept him. He said our next door neighbor was venting that all he's done since he retired is drive other people to the hospital for colonoscopies. There you go. Yeah. It's just so cheerful. Do you have any good news? You know what? I, I've stopped being targeted by Wombat articles. Really? How did After you make it stop? I don't know. After I complained during our podcast last week, all of a sudden the Wombat flow. So I, I just think... That Meta or whoever they are, Meta has spy cameras everywhere and they listen to every word that we say. Because seriously, I am not lying. They disappeared that day. And I haven't seen a Wombat article since. Are you so sure you, you really that? saw them in the first place? <laughs> yes. I was getting flooded with them. I don't know. I don't know. They thought I was like a Wombat collector or something. I don't know if there is such a thing, but do not wish to know. One back. Do not wish to know. Board. It's right up there with, a, yeah, exactly. It's right up there with elephant tie, wind chime, feather, chandelier, microphone, cable, porn. I don't want to know. You forgot mm. windmill. Windmill, right. Don't, don't want to. That's my favorite. Don't want to. Sounds really dangerous. Don't want to know. I think we've established our parameters now. Windmill porn. Assuming you've come this far because you enjoy the podcast, may we recommend my book, She Said What? A Life on the Air. It's available at your neighborhood bookstore or on Amazon. And if you're feeling especially generous, please leave the podcast a good review. Thanks.